Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and just this week I found more and more people have been asking me about concert ukuleles. It's been a while since I did a comparison video and I find myself with 11 concert ukuleles here that have not had a recent sound sample that deserve your attention, that deserve to be put in the spotlight and deserve to be talked about. And in fact the list originally was 15 but I just knew I'd never get that many done in one go so there may well be a part two to this video in the coming weeks. Uh, we've got ukuleles here that range from around £200 to £2,000 and pretty much everything in between. So there should be something here for everyone except the absolute beginner. Um, but hey, you know, not every video is going to appeal to every person. Uh, if you're an intermediate player though, or somebody who's looking for their first really serious uke, or something new at the high end to add to your collection, then I'm pretty confident we've got you covered today. I mean, we're going to look at ukuleles today from Ohana and Ole. Pono, Big Island, uh, Kamaka, Koloha and Blackbird. So a real spread of different brands from different countries with very different styles and different woods. Uh, plenty to get on with, let's begin. Okay, the first ukulele we're going to look at today, this absolutely gloriously unique looking piece of art is the Ohana CK150 SMP. Now this is part of Ohana's new 150 series which is a series of laminate wood ukuleles that offer deluxe features. So quite often the woods are exotic laminates like this. This is spalted maple laminate. Now on the surface you would be forgiven for thinking it might be something like mango or camphor burl. But according to Ohana's website as I recorded this this morning I surprised myself when I learned that it was maple. It's a very, very open sounding ukulele, not very typical of maple actually tonally as you'll hear in a moment. But yeah, you've got glorious looking wood on the front, back and sides, and a few deluxe features. The first one being this gorgeous looking rosette which blends hardwoods and abalone. And then you have a chamfered edge, like a comfort rest armrest. The fingerboard and bridge are oven coal, so a form of walnut kind of wood, very similar to rosewood, slightly different look. And then you have these gold open back tuners, which are really, really good tuners. The nut, pro the nut width on this is 35mm and the neck profile is nice and kind of round, very modern, slightly slimmer, um, much like a Pono or a Carla. But yeah, the CK150 SMP is an interesting one to start this video off today. It's the only laminate ukulele we're going to look at. But I was convinced enough by its sound when I first heard it at the NAMM show uh, last year that I, uh, I wanted to give it the go-ahead. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, the second ukulele we're going to look at today is a pineapple. This is the Pono MGCP. Now, I really wanted to feature a pineapple in this video because I think that as the years have progressed, more and more brands have been offering good quality pineapple ukuleles. And although their history goes all the way back to Kamaka in the uh, kind of early 1920s and 30s, modern pineapple ukuleles reflect what many modern players want tonally from a ukulele. The lack of inward curve on the bouts gives a more kind of well I would say like a more progressive bass response as you as you play it you definitely hear more of the lower frequencies the C and the E string come out more in the mix and the higher notes have I guess more of a natural um, kind of undercurrent to the frequency response of the uke. That all sounded very nerdy and not very well put. Basically it's slightly bass heavy but it still has that ukulele sound. That's what I should have said. Uh, the MGCP is Pono's um, most affordable offering. This is all solid mango. Lovely looking ukulele with a satin finish in the pineapple shape. And obviously it's a concert scale. You have a mahogany neck with an ebony fingerboard and bridge. And Pono use these open back tuners. You have a 35mm nut width and the thing I find about Pono is that they are not that fancy looking. Certainly, if you compare it to the uke we've just featured, 
you know this is a more plush looking instrument but what you get with Pono is something that's just good tone woods well made very simple there's nothing about it that cosmetically will uh, create the risk of it being a bit sloppy made they're all made just fantastic so I'm gonna give the Pono MGCP a play and see what you guys think Okay, we're gonna go for something traditional now, but stick with that Pono brand. This is the Pono MCD. The Pono MCD is just about as bare bones and traditional as a deluxe uke will ever get. It's all solid mahogany. Pono with that signature, very light stain on their mahogany has always set them apart from everyone else. Their mahogany ukuleles always look different. They don't necessarily look traditional like an old Martin, but the sound that they produce is warm, it's rich, it's what you expect from mahogany. Put simply, if you want a traditional sounding mahogany ukulele, but you want the feel of a modern built instrument, then Pono and the MCD won't let you down. Uh, there are some differences between the standard and deluxe ranges by Pono that we've talked about in other videos but just to give you the quick rundown the standard finish is a satin ukulele all satin simple tone woods with um, chrome hardware and the deluxe models just make a few changes the body has been glossed so it has a, a urethane gloss finish for the body the neck remains satin so it still feels quite natural to play and the hardware has been upgraded to gold so you've got gold machine heads you still have a 35 mil nut width ebony fingerboard and bridge and the whole thing feels petite but has just a slightly thicker width and depth to it than other concert ukuleles so it has just a bit more of a hawaiian feel to it than say a martin style ukulele uh, i'm going to give the mcd a play and see what you think Okay, moving on to our second Ohana of the day now. This is a new model for 2021. It's the Ohana CK390. Now, to look at it, you're probably thinking, that looks like a Martin, and that's pretty much Ohana's bag. If you were to describe Ohana in one sentence, it would be, that looks like a Martin. They do fantastic um, tributes to Martin models of yesteryear, and this is no different. This takes the... Um, the early 3K model that Martin produced about 100 years ago and then creates a concert scale version of it with the same tone woods and flourishes. So this is solid koa on the top, back and sides with a natural finish to give the whole thing a lived in sound and feel. You have that maple strip on the bottom of the body which is a, a feature that I absolutely love and I just can't wait for the day that a company like Canalea does a strip like that just I get excited about this kind of flourish because it reminds me of tradition of the early days of the ukulele and Ohana are one of the few brands that pick that up at the affordable end of the market you have an oven coal fingerboard and bridge with the um, two dot inlays going up the fingerboard on this model as well as the hopefully you can see it the strip so the strips inlaid down there it's a it's a decorative like kind of rope binding strip down there you have friction tuners which are white and finally you have a 35 mil nut width with a nice slender neck the ohana range of kind of 39s that go across the different sizes and now the 390s are i think the best 
Martin style ukuleles you're going to get under £500. Um, moving up the range of course you have Kawaii but to look at a Kawaii model of this spec would be nearly £2,000. Um, mahogany ukulele is slightly more affordable but if you want that Koa sound and you have a budget that does not go to the kind of um, dreamy heights of a Hawaiian K brand then the CK390 would be a good choice for you. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, we're moving on to something Hawaiian made now. And you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 Alex, that's a massive jump up in price. And you'd be wrong because the brand we're gonna look at is Ana Ole. And the Ana Ole concert here, the AC Mango, retails for approximately half that of a Koaloa KCM00 or a Kanalea K1. It's still Hawaiian made, made in Pearl City by a guy called Gareth Yaki, a builder who's had experience with um, building with other brands before branching out on his own. This is his standard range. He does uh, AC models in Mango and Koa and we, we do stock both. And these ukuleles look fantastic. He has good stock of Mango, but he doesn't use the really high grade kind of exquisite stuff. He uses the stuff that's a bit quirkier. So if you want something that looks very unique, this is a very good option. And the ACs feel completely different to other ukes that we're going to look at today. Mainly because the strangest thing about them is they have a 33mm nut width. And you're probably thinking, no, that's too small for me. But actually, if you look at the string spacing, the string spacing retains that 28, 29mm distance. So the nut width is narrow, but the string spacing tapers out very, very quickly. And what you get is something that feels just like a normal 35mm nut width. And I do feel the need to say that because it's the question I get asked the most about the Anna Ole concerts. But sound-wise, they're fantastic. I mean, under a thousand pound, this ukulele always stands out to me, uh, as does the AC Koa. I've decided to feature the Mango today because we've got quite a few Koa instruments on the go. Um, but the AC Mango to me is, you know, a real highlight of a ukulele is around that five, six hundred pound price point. So let's break down a bit more about it. We know it's Mango, Hawaiian Mango on the front, back and sides, with a Hawaiian Kiawi fingerboard and bridge. Kiawi is a very interesting wood. It kind of looks like slightly light rosewood. And texturally and to feel, it sounds to me and kind of has a, a bit of a walnut vibe going for it, oven coal, uh, much like the Ohanas that we've looked at today. You have a bone nut and saddle with gold Grover tuners. Same tuners as the Ponos and the Ohanas that we've just looked at. And yeah, the whole thing just has a uniqueness to it that you really can't normally get without spending two, three times the price. Uh, I'm going to give the AC Mango a play now and see what you guys think. Okay, we're going to look at a ukulele brand that we have a long association with here at the Southern Ukulele Store. One of my favourite ukulele brands ever. This is Big Island and this model is the KT CTS. Big Island have an interesting history. Much like Pono, they were a brand that were around uh, just as the ukulele hit it very, very big in 2009, 2010. You had very few choices back at that point. You had Lanakai and Carla and Ohana at the kind of affordable end. And then there at the high end, you had the Hawaiian brands. But in the middle, really, you only had Pono, Big Island and Kawaii. And 
Kawaii did a very traditional thing and Pono offered their own thing. But what Big Island did was offer a taste of the Hawaiian made high end ukuleles at a more affordable price. And I thought it would be appropriate to put a Big Island right next to an Ana Ole on the video today because for around the same kind of price you have ukuleles that have very similar ethos. The Big Islands were originally manufactured in Vietnam before being sent to Hawaii for final assembly. Uh, in more recent years, the brand has actually changed ownership. Uh, the man who set up Imua ukuleles was the original owner of Big Island before handing it over to a company in Japan that we deal with uh, for Goto. And uh, Hosco have done a good job with Big Island. They've narrowed down the models to the more popular choices and introduced a few special edition models each year. The KTCTS um, is a Hawaiian Koa concert it's been in the catalogue from the start in various forms and it's an all Vietnamese made ukulele for well under a thousand pounds that offers you a Hawaiian koa instrument, feels like a Hawaiian ukulele, it has a 35mm nut with that big turtle inspired headstock with that abalone inlay. You have closed back tuners with the snakewood matching buttons. And the Big Islands are one of the few ukuleles we're going to look at today under £1,000. In fact, the only uke under £1,000 today that comes with a really nice hard case. You have a rosewood fingerboard and bridge, just like they always used to make them. And the whole body is gloss, uh, including the neck. I think it's one of the only ukes today with a gloss finish we're going to look at. And I think uh, one of the biggest compliments I can play, pay Big Island is that you don't see too many of them on the second hand market because people tend to buy Big Islands and then they keep them. And uh, it's probably famous last words and if you search on eBay right now you'd find two or three. But it's certainly for the last five, six years plus these have been made in very, very small numbers and each one feels special in its own way. Uh, I highly recommend you take a look at our selection on the website now. There'll be a link in the description and just see how different each Big Island ukulele looks. I'm going to stop toying with you now. It's clear I like Big Island, but I'm going to give this a play and see what you guys think. Okay, the next ukulele we're going to look at ties in with the theme of the last two ukuleles. We've looked at Ana Ole, which is Hawaiian made on a budget. We've looked at Big Island, which is a taste of Hawaiian ukulele, but on a budget. And now we're going to look at the new kid on the block, the Anui Nui, AKK2. Anui Nui have been producing fantastic ukuleles that have just been spiralling upwards in quality for the last five plus years. They were always a brand that made affordable instruments, but since the introduction of the Moonbird about five years ago now, uh, the brand have just continued to release new ukuleles that tick the boxes for professional players or intermediate players that want something serious. And the AKK2 is the newest addition to that family. The AKK2 is all solid Hawaiian koa on the top, back and sides. We'll get you in the light there. Really nicely figured koa. It's an Anui Nui, so it's got the kind of petite feel to it and the body. But you do have a slotted headstock, a quite big classical guitar style slotted headstock there with uh, Anui Nui's own brand geared tuner. You have a mahogany neck with a 36mm nut width. And there has been some um, contention there because a Nui Nui's own website advertised this ukulele as having a 37mm nut width. But I've just measured this one up before we go on camera and uh, this particular one has a 36mm. So by all means get us to check and we'll continue to update our listings as and when deliveries come through. You have a rosewood fingerboard and bridge and there is just some very subtle uh, koa binding there. It's not just uh, an unbound instrument. They have bound the top and bound the back. The AKK2, uh, once again, well under a thousand pound, comes with a very nice padded gig bag. Um, and there's a lot to love here. So let's give this ukulele a play and see what you think.
Okay, so we've looked at the more affordable options, but let's say you really want that Hawaiian-made K-brand ukulele. You have three options if you want a concert. You've got Kanalea, you've got Kamaka, or you've got this. You have the Koaloa KCM00. Koaloa have been around for 25 years, 26 years now. They've just celebrated a 25th anniversary with some special edition models. Uh, we're going to look at one of those towards the end of this video. But the ukulele that started it all and the ukulele that has won over people is the standard 00 model, which is this. The KCM 00 is solid Hawaiian koa with the very unique Musabi sound hole. It's all unbound. But the koa lower dimensions, they have a slightly elongated lower bout with a slightly slimmer top bout and the inside is um, is ribbed, so the bracing is incredibly light and what you get is a, a very, a ukulele with just so much projection. A koaloa projects like nothing else. It's loud, they're vibrant, it's very, very hard to make one sound traditional because they are just so boisterous and mischievous. And I think that's uh, the best words used to describe this ukulele. The modern KCM 00s have an ebony fingerboard and bridge, but retain that Koa headstock with the abalone inlay and friction tuners with the Koaloa branded amber buttons. You have a 37mm nut width with rolled off fret edges so the frets end slightly recessed into the neck and the string spacing reflects that of more a um, kind of 36mm nut width so just a touch narrower, uh, the strings are just a touch closer together but you still have the wide nut width. Uh, the KCM 00s come in a hard case and they are just a touch over a thousand pound as I record this in 2021. So not a not a, the kind of purchase you make on a whim, a very considered purchase but definitely a ukulele for life if you get your hands on one. I'm going to give the KCM 00 a play and see what you think. Okay, so you've looked at the KCM00 and it's got that boisterous, uh, open sound. But there are other options out there if you want a Hawaiian K-brand ukulele, and one of them has been going for over 100 years. This is the Kamaka HF2. Uh, the Kamaka HF2 is the standard concert. It's solid Hawaiian koa on the top, back and sides. This one has some really lovely, unique grain going across the sound hole there. and. Kamakas are incredibly consistent. You could look at 10 Kamakas and they would all have the same sound, the same tuning. They, they take a lot more time than most selecting their tone wood because they want that Kamaka sound. And the Kamaka HF2s I think are probably made in much smaller numbers than a Koaloa KCM00 or a Kanalea K1. This brand have been going for 100 years for a reason. The HF2 has a very tradition, tra traditional, very sleepy sound to it. It's quite dreamy and the notes, they have a very soft decay. If you want to play light songs where you're strumming along and you just want the ukulele to sing, a HF2 is a fantastic choice. You have uh, pretty much a traditional spec all across the, the instrument, except you have Goto planetary tuners, which are black with white buttons as the machine heads on modern models. You have a rosewood fingerboard and bridge and the Kamakas come in a Kamaka branded hard case. Um, much like the KCM00 we've just looked at, this is an instrument for life and it's an heirloom quality introduction to the Kamaka brand. I'm going to give the HF2 a play and see what you guys think. Thank you. 
Okay, now we're going to take a detour. We're going to leave Kamaka and Kawalara and Honolulu, and we're going to jump on a plane, and we're going to fly to San Francisco. And in San Francisco, we have a very important ukulele brand, a brand that are going to lead us through the next century. This is Blackbird, and this is the Clara. This is the Sunburst Clara, the more deluxe model, which has a gloss finish, uh, this pineapple-shaped body with the offset sound hole. This one even has a Maisai which has volume and tone there with the end pin socket there a completely hollow neck going up to a small hole at the top so the whole thing is incredibly lightweight but what's it made of alex you haven't told us well this is made of a material called ecoa a man-made material made using resin and plant fibers that's baked and made in a completely carbon neutral way uh, so this instrument is baked it was put in the oven and it was made over a very long period of time and the whole thing is one piece that you can feel. It's not assembled, it's, it's completely harmonious from one end to the other. You have Goto planetary tuners and you're a rich light fingerboard. Rich light being another man-made material that feels uh, very similar tonally and texturally to ebony. Now Blackbird's story is very, very interesting and actually goes beyond the ukulele and guitar industry. I had the opportunity to meet with Joe at the NAMM show a few years in a row and we even did a podcast together that never aired with Andrew Hull at Hawaii Music Supply where he talked in depth about old growth trees and how really we are probably just a decade away from many of these old growth woods just being not available anymore. And if we want to continue building these high-end instruments, uh, an alternative was needed and Ecoa is definitely that material. I must warn you, because this ukulele has a low G and it's the only low G ukulele we're gonna to feature today, the Clara always comes up extremely favorably in a sound sample and it totally deserves that praise. The pineapple body and the low G give it a completely unique sound and this is probably the concert we're gonna look at today that has the most tenor ukulele sound to it. I highly recommend checking out some of our other videos on the Blackbird Claras and the Farallon models and checking out uh, Blackbird's own video about the process behind how they make Ecoa that I will put in the description to this video. Uh, I'm going to give the Clara Sunburst a play and see what you guys think. completely different <laughs> okay let's ignore what we just said uh, about being carbon neutral and blackbird and let's jump back on another imaginary plane from san francisco to honolulu uh, once we get over the jet lag we should look at this ukulele this is a koaloha red label silver series concert i talked about the tenor version of this in last week's video but just to unpack the very very long-winded name here you have three different tiers to how Koaloha produce their instruments. You have the factory doing the production runs. These red label models are made in even smaller numbers by the head luthiers, the senior members of the production team at Koaloha. And this ukulele has its own quirks. You have an abalone rosette, you have ebony front binding, and you have that unique silver series inlay on the uh, fingerboard. As you move up, you have Goto planetary tuners with amber buttons, and you have the Koaloa custom headstock, which is one of my favorite logos of all time. It's like Harley Davidson, the ukulele logo. 
Finally, you have a different bracing system on these ukuleles. Koaloas are traditionally ribbed, they're very lightweight. This has a more uh, conventional ladder bracing. And what that does is it tames the sound slightly. This instrument is less boisterous, slightly more traditional, slightly darker. But still, being a koaloha and having that natural projection about how they build their instruments, what you get is a very loud, very subtle instrument, completely unique. You won't find anything else that sounds like this. Uh, and it's gorgeous. So let's give this Koaloa Red Label a play and uh, see what you think. Oh, best tell you, this particular one is number C012, so number 12 in the series. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, there you have it folks. We've looked at 11 more concert ukuleles covering pretty much every single price and style along the way. But which was your favorite? Uh, please do leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel and click to be notified when we make a new video. Try and make something new every single week. Uh, if you have a question for me, uh, you can email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. If you have a question in general, feel free to give us a call too on 01202 430 820. Uh, I'll be back very, very soon. Not sure what next week's video is going to be, but I'm already looking forward to it. See you again, folks. Have a good day.